wow wow holy cow i i i am stuck for words on this i just finished watching episode nine of lovecraft country oh my goodness how I, I oh words cannot describe this i cannot wait to talk about this oh my gosh i oh i'm ready are you ready i hope you are because i know i'm gonna miss some things but i gotta talk about this okay my brain oh my heart <laughs> my mouth ah, <laughs> and everything else is going for this i am so hyped to talk about this you guys so oh, freaking love god country <laughs> Get ready. Woohoo! Hey everybody, it's your boy Montel. What's going on? How's everybody doing? Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day, week, month year millennium hopefully you're watching these you're covering this you're staying this far away hopefully you guys are taking care of yourself thank you so much for joining me thank you so much to everybody who has come to support my channel you guys have no idea how much this hypes me up to know that there are people checking out my stuff now i know i am at fault i apologize i did not do the videos for uh for episodes seven and eight but I felt like those episodes stood on their own and they didn't need me to review them because I tend to forget things and y'all like to correct me and it's perfectly fine. So not a problem. But yeah, I didn't do those for those. But trust me, if you haven't watched episodes seven and eight, you need to go see seven and eight. OK, because seven and eight were fire, especially seven. Seven was beautiful. Eight was crazy with a capital craze. OK, but anyway. Thank you so much for joining me guys thank you so much for all the support thank you for people who are coming to check out my channel and then go to check out the podcast blur to corn speaks i can tell that people are coming to check out angie and myself we talk about blurred things it's been wonderful you guys have been a blessing and i can't thank you enough for this. and i'm so hyped for this i am sitting down in my chair after watching lovecraft country tonight episode nine let me tell you oh my gosh yo when i tell you there is so much going on in this and i love how this show continues to lay pieces on top of each other even a piece that was way out here at one point seems to come right back and lay on top of itself okay before i go on we get into it if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button right there let that way you can go ahead and be ready and know when I'm putting up a video. You'll be one of the first people to know. People's people to know. <laughs> Hit the notification bell so that way when it does pop up, you guys be on that list of VIPs who know what's going on. And of course, like my videos. Please. 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 Love Crowd Country. Please. Oh my goodness. This has been such an amazing thing. And if you haven't already, Please go to Anchor or Apple iTunes or Spotify or Google uh, Podcasts or anything like that. Any podcast platforms and go find Blur to Corn Speaks. This is one of my babies. Angie, Miss Angie and myself, we talk about nerd and blurred things and we have a very candid discussion. We also talk about gaming. We do shout outs to people. We also talk about Lovecraft Country. I'm probably going to talk about other shows now that Lovecraft Country is almost done. So we are really hyped about this. So please come check us out. We would appreciate that. We love when people come and check us out and even give us topic ideas. We're looking for people to give us suggestions of what we can talk about in our in our uh, podcast episodes. We are in our second season. We just I just uploaded episode 30. Wow. 30 episodes. Goodness. I didn't think it would ever be there. And of, of course, I also do my IGTV with my Blur to Corn Convos. And I bring different blurs in from different walks and different genres. And we, it's not an interview, it's a conversation. And we just talk about everything. We chop it up about everything. And I want you guys to come check us out. And that would be wonderful, okay? So we get into it. Oh, goodness. Lovecraft Country, was it uh, episode nine? Revive 1921. Goodness sakes alive. What a freaking ride. Okay, we have gotten to this point right now where all of the players are coming together. We got Tick and Letty. You've got Montrose. Of course, you got Christina, who's got Ruby there. 
And this is from the previous episode when uh, D was cursed. And the curse, unfortunately, took on a very scary visage of the, the Jigaboos from, uh, from uh, Uncle Tom's cabin. And the whole center part of it was... Uh, the the funeral of uh, Emmett Till, who was Dee's best friend, known as Bobo. So, and she was affected the most by that. So we come to fast forward because of the curse that was placed on her by Lancaster with his bitch ass. She is now cursed. And when you we open it up, we see her laying on the couch. She's surrounded by everybody, and her arm just looks petrified and just and and very desiccated. And looks like it's it's you could just tell she's cursed and she's completely unconscious and they're all fighting about what they're going to do and and of course they all come up with their different theories and mind you they're all on the emotional wave just emotional roller coaster right here right now because while they're trying to overall just protect themselves from Christina's crazy ass at the same time they want to save D right now Hippolyta has not returned and of course, people say, well, the speculation is George is still alive. Ain't seen nothing of him. So we are just in this position right now. And of course, Ruby is there. And you still see the tension between everybody. And when it boils down to it, Ruby suggests going to Christina and asking her for help. Mind you, everybody cannot stand this crazy heifer because she has her own agenda. However, they're out of options. They're completely out of options. So they go kick Christina. She comes in and she tells them there's nothing that she can do. She can do a restoration spell that will restore D to uh, a, a more a more stable condition. But it's not the cure-all end-all. What they need is the Book of Names. And the only way to get that is to somehow find where it is. Now, from previous history, from what I've gleaned over everything... The book of names was destroyed in a house that belonged to their family. So the only way they could do that is try to go back and hope and pray that they can come across this book buried somewhere, maybe stored somewhere. Someone had the wherewithal to just put it someplace safe because the house is located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. If you guys recall history, not the whitewashed bull crap. I'm talking about real deal life history of Black Wall Street. We're talking 1921 Tulsa, Oklahoma. And that was a time where black folk were prosperous and they were prominent and they weren't bothering anybody. But what happens is you have some sorry ass white people who don't like the fact that someone's doing better than them and don't rely on them. So this is this is the uh this is the preempt before that event. So they're figuring out what they're gonna do, okay? And and what ends up happening out of nowhere here comes Hippolyta. Hippolyta comes in and she explains that she has been gone to another uh, uh, another dimension or another world where 200 years has transpired in in, uh, in Earth time. So yeah, she has all this wisdom and all this knowledge, and they tell her what has to what they need to do. So what does she do? She says, "All right, we're gonna save my daughter. I don't give a damn what the hell we got to do. We're gonna go save her." So they got to go back to the observatory to the time machine. Hippolyta can fix the time machine and she becomes the focus for them. Well, she becomes the fuel, so to speak. And the focus that they're that they're needing is the picture that Montrose possesses that takes them back to uh, takes them back to Tulsa 1921. Now, this whole time, Montrose is still going through his own little personal hell. He's still dealing with what happened to him in his past. And we find out that he drinks alcohol to stop the voices in his head, the voices of his past. And the whole time he's about to make the embark on this journey, you could see the fear and the, and uh, the, the, um, all this anxiety that he's going through because he's got to go back to this. And now we, and, and as we watch this episode, we find out why he's feeling this anxious. And there are a lot of revelations that come up. We find out that Montrose had a lover. However, comma, we also came in on a part where Montrose's father was beating on him because he was trying on George's jacket for the prom, but because he took the corsage, put it in his hair, his father being the male chauvinist uh, black dude, regardless of what you say, if you, if you still, if you, if you're so focused talking about 
your kids are sissies, then you're a male chauvinist, so shut your ass up. Anyway, and we see a little bit of what's going on, and, and the more we see, the more we kind of understand and see what Montrose is going through internally, because he could not help the way he was. And some of y'all understand this, you have folks who were part of the LGBTQ. They are who they are. These folks, these beautiful people are who they are. And trying to change them is pointless. And if you try to change somebody because it's not what you're fitting, then you are a sorry tale individual, okay? So we see everything about to happen and then we get into what what, what, could, what transpired with uh, with Tulsa, with the white folks coming in like a, like a bomb and they're attacking and they're shooting and killing everybody. So now they got to go into their separate areas. Now they know they got to go back to the family house to get the book of names. And of course, Letty goes there. Montrose and... Uh, Montrose ends up disappearing earlier in the day and then Tick has to got to go find him. But when we find Tick, Tick finds him, but it's not where it's anything significant. We find out that this is a personal point for Montrose. This is where the young boy that he was actually liking and loving, he had to tell him they weren't friends anymore to try to save his life. And that's when we start seeing that he really didn't want this, but this is what was told how to be a man. He had to rip out the soft parts. Like he said that he had to rip out the soft parts so that way you could be a man. And we boil down to it. Montrose wanted to be a father and he is proud of Tick, but he only had the example of his abusive father from back in the day. So we go back to fast forward. Now at one point, Tick said, when we're done with all this, I'm done with you. And you can see the hurt in Montrose's eyes. And I felt that too. I would never want my child to say we're done with each other. But there was a bigger plan in place. So they're at the alley and they see what's going on. The sun sets, everything, all the chaos starts breaking out. And then we start getting little glimpses. Because Montrose recalls what happens. Him and the boy are standing in the park. Here comes this mob of white people and they start beating up on him. And they said, and then Montrose says, then somebody came with a ball bat and just starts swinging for the fences and saying, I got you, kid. So what happens? Well, the person didn't show up. And now we remember a little bit back before Montrose took a ball bat, broke open the window in a car and took a bottle. and He was going to drink that bottle. But we go back to a little bit forward and they step forward. What do we see on the ground? A ball bat. We come to find out that the mysterious figure wasn't anybody considered Jackie Robinson. It was Tick. I lost my mind when I saw this. I said, Yo! Tick is a hero! You gotta love this! And he goes and he said, Oh, that cat's swinging for the fences. I'm telling you, he is. It's like, oh, watching Samson with the jawbone of an ass beat up on the Philistines. Oh my gosh, he was laying into him. I'm sitting there going, Oh, get into it, yeah! And the whole time, I'm also looking in the background too because I'm seeing Montrose and his eyes are transfixed on the whole scene. He hasn't moved, but he's understanding more about choices. And if he had tried to save the little boy, what kind of a change in history? Because mind you, remember, they're gone back into time in 1921. So we're not sure if anything that they do is going to have a change on what happens. Unfortunately, what happens, happens. So we fast forward back to where Letty is. Letty's in the house. They're getting attacked on the block. People are throwing Molotov cocktails into the house. Letty is trying to find this book. She's not sure where to look. And then the, the matriarch of the family comes into the room where Letty is. And she says, what are you doing here? I'm trying to find a better place to shoot. She puts a bead on her and says, nah, you're looking for something. What are you looking for? And Letty tells her everything. And you can just tell as she's talking, she believes her. So this lady, bless her heart, goes into a wall behind a painting, pulls out the book of names and gives it to her. And just as she gives it to her, she says, can you pray with me? They pray together. Here come the flames. The flames start coming. And I tell you, this show, the special effects, they grab you and they grip you and they keep you focused. It's like watching a car wreck. And it, it, it really caught me because as Letty is sitting there, mind you, Letty has got the invulnerability spell on her, which was passed onto her and woven onto her by Christina. She's got the book close and she's holding onto the matriarch's hand and she is watching this lady burn. When I tell you that gripped my soul, 
Letty did not let this woman go until her hand faded away. She watched her. Oh my gosh. She watched her burn. And you saw that, saw the whole thing happen until her body fell. And you saw it just tear into Letty. You saw it tear into her. I know when I saw it, I was like, goodness, that had to be, it, it was, it was like, I can save myself, but I can't save you being in that catch 22. And that's where Letty was. So Montrose is back at the house and he's recalling, he's looking out the window and he is seeing everything happening in the town. He's seeing the town burn. You actually see a biplane come out of the sky and start dropping bombs in the middle of the street. And you see Montrose recall what happened to certain members of the community and how they died. And you could see how it got him and it gripped him and you cannot help but feel. And you start thinking about what you read about what happened and the casualties and what was lost and, and the significance. And once again, we see that history can tends to be whitewashed because I didn't know about that when I was going to school and trust and believe there were a lot of people who knew nothing about that because it's not in the history books. And that's something that's, that's, that's a crime. That is an absolute crime because people don't, they want to be all hunky dory and nice and focus on certain things. Nah, that is some bullshit. History needs to be taught, whether it's good or it's bad. It is still history. And what happened in Tulsa was history. And Montrose, as he's viewing the town and he's seeing it, it got me. And it's like, oh my goodness, what people had to sacrifice for us to be where we are today. Anyway, that's a totally different video, but we see, t we, and, and we, we, we see not only is Montrose looking out the window, but Tick looks and notices that the portal is fluctuating something wrong with. It. So he jumps through, he sees Hippolyta. She is the, she's a power source for the time machine and she is, she's faltering. She says she can't keep it open. You can see, it looks like she's been throwing up and her eyes are getting white and she is doing it. So Tick is on that side. He is rooting her on and keeping her driven. Do this for D. And she, he's doing it. And you can see her fight. Like any mom, any dad, any parent would do for their child. If it is for my child, I will fight through it. And that's what she did. She fought through the pain. She fought through everything to keep that portal open for D. And then you see electrical impulses going through her face and you see her hair turn completely blue. Who does that remind you of? Who does that remind you of? Dee's comic book. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yo, she literally became the space age superhero of her daughter's creation, which was an absolutely brilliant twist on that. And I love that. I love that. She said, Oh, oh, and I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> and pretty other people were watching it to go, oh, oh, so while Tick is on this side of the portal, Montrose is on the other side, and then we see Letty walking up the street. Now, at this point, I'm sitting there going, hurry up, what are you doing? She can't keep the portal open, hurry up, and then I'm looking at her face, and it is, the weight of it all has hit her. The weight has hit her and is on her shoulders and she is angry and she is tired and she is frustrated. and She's holding that book close. You've got explosions going on around her, people shooting and she don't give a damn. She's like, I'm going and she's getting there. And that walk alone had a lot of emotion behind it because you could see the, the years and she was representative of the years of stress and anger and, and, anxiety and and just being angry and tired that black folk had to deal with all these years and thinking that we're going to make it and we don't and then we tried and we get beat down and people still still being considered second class citizens and it's, it's sorry that's another tangent altogether but you saw that in her face i saw that and i'm sure some of y'all saw that too so they finally get through the portal finally they get through the portal and i'm sitting there going Lady, what took you so damn long? We almost lost another one. What the hell's going on with you? Should have got there. And then each of them, Tick, when it was done, Tick took Hippolyta, held her close. 
Letty is just standing there and just in total awe. And then you see Montrose and every one of them had their own things to deal with. This episode was phenomenal. Now, I didn't talk about everything. I didn't talk about how Ruby asked about uh, the, the, the young lady who was the caretaker um, on her father's uh, farm and how she let her die because Ruby is really look is, is she is really being sold into this whole thing with Christina and I'm so curious to see how far this is going to go and you could just tell when she turned off the air for that lady's body and looked at Christina and said you know when I thought I'd be white I always pictured myself a redhead I said oh shit here we go here we go so it's being sold. Uh, there was also another scene where William comes in. This is after the Shogoth attack. William comes in to Lancaster's office. Lancaster is dying. They are weaving this spell to bring him back, but he is not being brought back. So we find out why the spell isn't working. The talisman that Ruby placed in that desk a few episodes ago. That is short circuiting the spell that is allowing him to regenerate. Remember I said before he was reanimated, I will, I, hey, now you see, it was a spell of regeneration and he still got, he got black folk skin on him and you can see, see the, the big thick staples in his chest and he is dying and he is hurting, he's like, we tried try the spell, we, so we did everything you're supposed to do and it's not working and he's laying on the floor dying and bleeding and everything else and then you see William come in, William said, I wanted you to die a thousand deaths, one is enough. And you see Lancaster die, and you can see that look in, in William's face slash Christina. That was, yeah. Christina's objective is getting closer to being. We won't know what's going on completely in episode 10 because there's still a lot of speculation, but this show makes you think a lot on different levels. It brings you in with history and also the supernatural and magic and lore and, 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 people as a whole and what they deal with especially black folk and i love that the focus of the show is on people of color and all of the uh, adversity that they deal with and at the same time still trying to live life and it's a brilliant story it's so it's this is such an intertwining and gripping show and i freaking love this show oh my goodness we've needed a show like this for the longest time and i'm so glad the Lovecraft Country is on. So if you haven't watched episode nine, go watch episode nine. If you haven't seen seven, go see seven because that is Hippolyta's coming out. I'm telling you, that was a powerful episode. Episode eight, creepy, heart brunching. At the same time, it was still captivating to watch. I love a good story. I love how characters are, are, are portrayed and the story is being told and you can't help but get wrapped up in everything. So, Lovecraft Country Episode 9, Revived 1921. I definitely get this up there. It was a 12 out of 10 as far as I'm concerned. But thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you so much for my extremely truncated and uh, bounce around review of Lovecraft Country. So, what were your favorite parts of the show? What were your favorite scenes? Who had you, who, who grabbed your heart the most? What do you feel is most significant? What are your theories? I really want to hear this. Leave them in the comments below because you guys throw me amazing comments and I always respond to them. And thank you for your, just thank you for the love. Thank you for the support. Thank you for following me. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing. Thank you for supporting my podcast, Blurtercorn Speaks with Miss Angie. Thank you for joining me on my IG lives, my Blurtercorn combos. And thank you guys so much for everything. And as always, as I always ask you beautiful, sexy, amazing blurticorns out there with the awesome imaginations and the good looks and everything. <laughs> stay nerdy, stay geeky, stay sexy. Please stay safe. I will see y'all next time, okay? You take care. Bye.